In today's news, Dana White turns down requests to increase bonuses for UFC 306. In the past, the UFC president had been convinced to increase post-fight bonuses for pay-per-view cards. However, the good times are over after a disappointing night at UFC 304. On that unfortunate date, there were nine fights that went into decision and a string of seven consecutive decisions, stretching from the early prelims all the way through to the first two fights on the main card, despite big finish bonuses being on the table. This left a sour taste in White's mouth, who sent a message to the roster to stop asking for bigger bonuses because he's not doing it anymore. Now, during Thursday's UFC 306 pre-fight press conference, fighters tested White's boundaries and asked for bonuses for Noche UFC. Here's Dana's response. Pues, un cheque especial y un bono para celebrar nosotros, o qué opinan, compañeros? Listen, I think if we already have an event to celebrate the hardest working people in the world, maybe a different kind of paycheck or some sort of additional bonus to reward us for such hard work. What do you say, people? De no, de yeah. no, de no, de no, de no, de no. Question. Yeah, Robin O'Malley also had at it during the press conference. Check this. A super fight with a guy like Javante Tank Davis one day. Yeah, it, it depends on my performances. I got to go out there and knock this dude out with my hands. I do that a few more times. That, that fight's inevitable. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. Nobody knock me out yet. Nobody. Keep dreaming, Shadowman. You, you don't knock out Chito Vera. I did knock out Aljo though, didn't I? No, that was early stuff. I'm not to help you. Come on. Did that was early. I... You lucky. I was lucky as fuck. I keep getting lucky. It's crazy. Every fight I get lucky. Somehow, some way, I get lucky. Okay, try with me. Same thing. Justin Gaethje provides a career update. Justin's coming off a devastating knockout loss to Max Holloway that he suffered back at UFC 300 this April. Now, in an interview with MMA Fighting, Gaethje has revealed that he will be returning to sparring in a month. He also shared his list of potential upcoming opponents. I said I was going to take six months before I sparred, but it's been four and I'm going to be, I'm going to have a difficult time making it six months because <laughs> I'm itching, but I think I'm going to give it another month before I spar and then get back into camp. So we'll see. There's kind of like a, you know, another opportunity for somebody like how Dustin Poirier stepped in. There's not a clear contender. So I think, you know, obviously I have to fight. Well, and win. I'm right back in there. Does it mean like know, Dan, think, Dan Hooker makes sense to you? Yeah, Dan Hooker. I, I, I have a list. I think Hooker, you know, Oliveria, Poirier, and Volkanovski is a group of, a list of four people that I think any of those would be, do for me what I need to do to get back in the picture. So. Max Holloway provides his prediction for the Sean O'Malley vs. Marab Vajvili fight. Speaking in a recent YouTube video, Holloway quickly broke down the upcoming fight between Sugar and Marab, picking Sean to beat Marab tomorrow. Max says that Marab gets hit a lot and that he'll not be able to withstand multiple clean punches from O'Malley. Marab, great cardio, great pressure, great fighter, but one hole in his game that we've seen over and over again is he, he gets caught. He gets caught and he gets caught early. It's almost like he gets caught early and then he turn on and then it's a fight, you know, like, but... If there's one guy in your guys' division that you do not want to get caught by, it is Sean. But you cannot take away that this guy can fight, this guy can crack, he knocks out people. And my belief in this fight, a lot of people have been asking me and waiting for see who I pick. I'm going Sean, man. I'm going Sean. No disrespect to Marab. Marab is, is, is great. He's good everywhere. But man, if you do the mistakes, if you get caught clean by Sean and Sean know you're hurt, he's going to find another shot to put you down. That's just it. Michael Bisping likes the idea of a Tony Ferguson versus Nick Diaz fight. Monday, multiple reports came out that at UFC 311 in January, we could see Ferguson square off against Nick Diaz, who's another fighter whose career feels like it's been stuck in a time capsule. Speaking on his BYM podcast, Bisping shared his take on the matchup and explained why it actually makes a lot of sense. So is the Tony Ferguson versus Nick Diaz, is that locked in? Because I remember at the time there was a lot of people on Twitter and stuff saying, you know, when Michael Chiesa was booked to face uh, Tony Ferguson, and Tony Ferguson was booked, sorry, and Nick Diaz was booked to face Vincente Luque, people were like, well, hold on, why doesn't Ferguson just fight Nick Diaz? Okay, well, the thing is, Tony Ferguson did the whole, I'm not leaving bit from Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and if he wants to stick around and he wants to have one, and we all want to watch him because, you know, listen, it's, it's, I hate to say it, it's not car crash TV, but it's like, God, you know, as a guy that's past his best, 
if he is going to do it, and if the UFC do give him one more fight, then Nick Diaz is a perfect matchup. They're both legends of the sport. They've both been around forever. People love Nick Diaz. You know, an OG, a pioneer of the sport. If they're going to let them have one more fight, a swan song, if you will, it is the perfect matchup. So, fair play to both of them. And if it happens, best of luck to both of them. And as I say, in terms of matchups, if they're going to do it, it's perfect. Dana White says he is not interested in signing the fighter who beat Alex Pereira in kickboxing. Yusri Belgarawi defeated Pereira via unanimous decision while fighting under the glory banner back in April of 2017. He's also fought Israel Adesanya twice, but lost both of those clashes. Yusri then moved to MMA and competed in Dana White's Contender Series in August of 2023, where he faced Marco Tulio Silva in a middleweight bout, lost via unanimous decision, and failed in securing a UFC contract. Bugarawi received another shot at a UFC contract, competing in DWCS 71, where he defeated Japan's Taiga Iwasaki via third round TKO, although it wasn't enough because despite the fighter winning DWCS season 8, the UFC CEO denied him a UFC contract. He was an 11 to 1 favorite against a guy who took a fight on short notice. He's a 6 foot 5 middleweight. Instead of closing his hands and using them to keep him off him or to finish him, he poked him in the eyes five or six times or four or five times, whatever the number was. Um, he did not impress me tonight. I'm not interested. BJ Penn puts a man to sleep after he allegedly hit his daughter. Penn, a legend and former UFC lightweight and welterweight champion, has posted a photo to his Instagram page of a man laying down on the ground unconscious. He captioned it writing, This is Pete. Pete found out he was allergic to hitting my daughter. Don't be like Pete. Pete. BJ provided some more information, writing, Yeah, we definitely have to be careful how we raise our children. I believe violence, especially a man hitting a woman, is a learned trait. My parents would argue all the time, but I never saw my dad lift a hand towards her or grab her forcefully. God bless everybody to be the best that they can possibly be. Hashtag Hawaii. It's time for today's top memes. Third place was found over on Instagram and was posted by Golden Combat 23. The second place meme was found over on Reddit and was posted by MorePut8790. The top pick was found over on Reddit and was posted by Gerardo1917. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with the latest MMA news.